Hi, my name is Alistair Chapman and in this video I want to take a look at this lamp here from Nanlite which is the Forza 300. Now this Forza 300 here is a 300 watt LED lamp. It's a single cob unit in here and it produces light that's normally focused with a reflector like this to give you a spotlight. Now it uses a standard Bowens mount on here so we have a number of different adapters and things that we can add to this lamp if we want different types of light. And my favourite one, which I'll show you in a little bit, is the Fresnel lens adapter. And that turns this into a focusable Fresnel light, giving you far greater control of where your light goes. Now in terms of output, the 300 watts of this LED is somewhere around the equivalent of a 3000 watt tungsten light and this light really really does chuck out a lot of light. It's 43,000 lux at one meter and to put that into some perspective from a practical shooting point of view I recently did a night shoot in a forest and we wanted to create a lighting effect that perhaps resembled moonlight or something like that coming through the trees. And I was able to achieve that with just this one single lamp running off batteries. Now if you were using tungsten lights or even HMI lights, you'd need a big generator, um, external power of some sort somehow, and that makes the shoot much more complicated. And this particular production was on a very, very small, very tight budget. So not needing a generator being able to run off battery power made this very portable, much easier to set up. It's also very, very light. The whole system weighs 4.8 kilograms, and that means it's very portable. You don't need a lot of effort to carry it and move it around. I think the, the head of the lamp unit is under three kilos, so you don't need a massive stand to support it. And again, in this recent night shoot that I did with this light, that meant I could use a very tall conventional light stand. I didn't need a cherry picker or any other sort of crane to get my light uh, five meters up in the air very, very easily. Now, one thing I would say about using any type of light of this sort when you are running it off batteries is you are going to need very good batteries. So the power adapter here, which is separate, connected to the lamp head by uh, an umbilical cable can take two V-Lock batteries. And we have to remember that when this light is drawing 300 watts at full power, that means that you're taking around about 10 amps from each of those batteries. And that's right at the limit at what most conventional V-mount batteries can deliver. So you may find that if your battery is old or it isn't the best quality of battery, that the battery will cut off early because it's being overloaded. Now that's not a problem with the light fixture, you're going to find that same problem with all of this type of light. So you might need to either dim the light down, and it is of course fully dimmable from the control unit here, or use batteries designed for a high current draw, such as lithium manganese V-lock batteries, which can deliver much higher current levels. My own personal preference is for PAG's PAGLINK batteries, because when you combine two PAGLINK batteries together, you double their current output. And during the forest shoot, by using four PAG-Link batteries, so that's two stacked onto each of the V-Lock terminals on the power unit, I was getting around 90 minutes of runtime out of four batteries, which is actually pretty good. This is a very, very powerful lamp, producing a lot of light, and that was at full power. Now, all of the stuff I've talked about so far is fine and great, but, of course, we also need a very high quality of light. And the quality of the light output from this is really good. So if I grab my trusty uh, Seconic uh, color meter here, my SpectroMaster color meter, and we actually have a look, let me just turn it on, at what this lamp actually produces. And if I just do a quick measurement here, we'll see that we have a CRI of 95. And the light output is of very high quality. And if we look at the spectrum from it as well, you'll see that the spectrum is very uniform. There is a bit of a blue spike, but that's what you're going to expect from a daylight balanced light. This is a, a 56K 
so 55k it's coming up on my meter 55k daylight balanced light but in terms of shooting people and skin tones and things like that the quality of this lamp is really nice it does produce very nice skin tones with all of the cameras that i've used it with so no problems in terms of image quality now one of my favorite accessories for this light is the fresnel lens so let's fit that it's very easy to fit it's a bowens connector so i just release the catch to remove the reflector and then this is the Fresnel adapter and the same adapter actually fits both this the Forza 300 and the even more powerful Forza 500. I have actually used the Forza 500 and that is a truly incredible light in terms of the amount of output and actually for a lot of applications the 500 might actually be too much there's so so much light from it. The 300 here produces more than enough light for the majority of things that I do and I don't feel I would need to go to the 500 for most things. Now this Fresnel adapter is fully zoomable so I can just turn the big ring on the outside here to zoom the lamp in and uh, to make it much more spotted. So if I turn it around and point it on the wall behind me here so it's about five degrees when it's fully zoomed in like that and then this broadens out to around about 45 degrees on its fullest wide setting. And the beauty about this adapter is it really does make your light much more controllable. So you're not getting spill going all over the place. You can keep the light just where you want it. And that then helps you get much better contrast in your shots because really the best way to get good contrast is through light control. And that's what this type of lamp gives you. And it's why I'm a big fan actually of these Fresnel type lights because of the controllability that you have. Now talking about controllability let's have a little bit of a look at the control unit. So of course we have the ability to dim the light and it goes from 0% all the way up to 100% but we also have some effects mode in this lamp and the effects modes that we have we have flash and this gives us a flash mode there's a second flash mode and a third flash mode and if I press this button here I can change the flash rate so we can have different flash modes. Then the uh, next effect that we have, we have a storm mode every time I press the trigger button we get something that mimics lightning in a thunderstorm and there are three different storm modes. Uh, each providing slightly different lightning effects and the third one about every 10 seconds or so gives us a new flash of lightning. Now if we go to this one this is our TV effect that's supposed to mimic uh, somebody watching a TV and again if I press and hold this we can change the rate at which that changes to mimic different types of TV shows perhaps. And then we have a bad bulb effect which mimics a flickering or defective light bulb. Every now and again, it flickers and flashes. So those are our effects modes within the lamp. We also then within the menu, we have the ability to set things like the DMX address because we have obviously on a, on a light at this level, we have full remote DMX control. But there's another nice feature which I haven't actually got, but I intend to get, and that is optional Wi-Fi remote control. Now, one other thing that some of you who are listening to this, perhaps with headphones on, might just have noticed is, yes, there is a fan in this lamp. There is a large single fan in the bottom of the head unit, but this large fan doesn't run very fast. So it is very, very quiet. It's a 300 watt light, so it does get hot and that fan keeps it cool, allowing you to shoot continuously. Now we can turn the fan off Again, it's done via the control panel here, it's very simple. And if I just go into the menu, turn the fan off, the fan is now off. Now I'm standing less than a foot from this lamp. My microphone is here. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if you could hear the fan. But when you're shooting in a normal shoot in a normal sized environment, the fan noise is very low. You, you really just don't hear it. It was certainly not a problem in my outdoor shoot. You didn't hear it at all. And in the other shoots that I've done with this lamp in a normal environment, you don't notice that fan noise. It just tends to get 
lost in the general room noise that you have in most cases. But you can turn it off if it is a problem. But what that means then is that if I just come out of the menu, you are then limited to a lower power output. Now the dial still says 100%, but the actual output of the light is a little bit reduced. I think it's about 75% of its full output. And we can run it like this all day long without the fan. And it's still an awful lot of light that comes from this lamp. So really that's it. That's the Forza 300 from Nanlite. I really love this lamp. It gives me so much control over where my light goes with the Fresnel adapter on here. I can put soft boxes and things like that when I want a really nice, bright and very large soft light, much more light than you'd typically get from most of the smaller one foot and one by one panels. And it's dimmable, runs off batteries. What more could you want? A great lamp from Nanlite.